In this lesson, we will study about recurrent neural network model. So the first question is, why do we need an RNN? Why do we need a sec separate model? Why cannot we do away with a simple neural network? So let's say we have a task of uh, named entity recognition where we are given uh, a sentence, let's say in English, and we have to uh, identify which words uh, denote the name of a person. So here uh, x1, x2, and all the way up to x, tx, this can be some uh, number depending on the number of words in the sentence. Uh, so these are the individual words and we can represent them in, in different ways. Simplest way would be to represent them in one hot encoding. So let's say we have a vector which denotes this word. So it will have a bunch of zeros and one of the values will be one and all other values of the vector will be zero. So this will depend on the size of the vocabulary of course and similarly for all the other words we will have one hot encoding vector so we will feed these words to the first layer of uh, a neural network and then subsequently uh, these will be connected to different hidden layers uh, and uh, uh, we will have a bunch of hidden layers and each of these layers will have thousands of neurons so you can uh, see that we can have a large number of parameters so now uh, the question remains why do we need a recurrent neural network why not this why not this uh, plain neural network will work uh, so one thing is that uh, these uh, simple neural networks are meant for uh, tasks where we have a fixed size of input and fixed size of output so in this case uh, we can have uh, sentences with different number of words so uh, this is not suitable for that so that is one of the reasons variable length of input and outputs both so in this case we had a one to one uh, relationship so for each word we will denote whether it's a name or not so zero or one so the input will be same as output length but in many other scenarios like for example uh, we have to do a uh, translation into from one language to other language from English to French then the number of words in the input sentence may not be same as the number of words in the output sentence so this is one of the reasons and the second is that which uh, you m m uh, may know if you have taken uh, the convolutional neural network course that uh, parameter sharing so uh, if the network learns to detect a uh, certain word for example John and if John appears as the first uh, word in the sentence, it's a name, then the same learning should apply uh, when John appears anywhere else in the sentence. So, so this kind of uh, features learned in one part of the network should be available in the other parts of networks. The same logic was there in the convolutional neural networks case. So these are the two main reasons why we need a separate uh, neural network model for sequence modeling tasks. Another reason is that uh, in this case of uh, plain neural network, the number of parameters will be huge. But if uh, we have a proper model just for that purpose, then we can reduce the number of parameters significantly. Now, uh, so, so these are the main reasons that we had seen. Next, let's see RNN. Uh, so here uh, we feed one input. So our sentence will have several words. So this is the first word x1 at timestamp 1 and then the uh, neural network will try to predict an output y hat 1 and it will also uh, generate some activation a1 and then in the next timestamp it will read the second word. So it reads the words from left to right. So now when the some prediction is made from the first word it will get it will read the second word which we will denote by x2 and try to predict y hat 2 and a2. So you see that here uh, for predicting y2 it doesn't just use x2 but it also uses the activation from previous timestamp a1 and similarly when we are predicting y, y hat 3. it reads the word x3 and it uses the activation from previous timestamp and in the beginning uh, we can initialize it with 
there are different ways of initializing we can call it a0 and it's generally a vector of all zeros uh, but some people also uh, initialize it with some random values and finally we will have the last word let's say we have uh, 10 words so x10 and it will predict y10 and a10 and it will take as input a9 also and in general uh, at timestamp t it will take input xt and a t minus 1 and try to predict y t and a t and uh, th in some uh, representations you will also see this kind of diagram so there is a loop here to denote the recurrent uh, relationship and you will also see a square box and shaded box here to denote a delay because first we process first word then the second word and so on so this denotes delay and this denotes the loop denotes a recurrent relationship and this diagram on the left is called unfolded diagram of the right one so when you see this diagram you should think of it like this one the left one the unrolled unfolded diagram now let's see the forward propagation for uh, this uh, recurrent neural network model so this was x1 and this is y hat 1 and a1 and this is a0 now uh, there are certain parameters which are shared for all the words so uh, it's not that for first word we use different set of parameters for second word we use different set of parameters so these are shared and uh, for the notation we will use it like this the uh, parameters governing the connection of this input with uh, the hidden layers we will denote it as w a x and this one we will denote as w y a and here w a a and the same thing here if we have x2 here and x3 here y hat 3 y hat 2 so this will be same so it will be w a x w y a and same here w a a w y a and uh, we can also represent it like this y hat t x hat x t so you see that for making a prediction of y hat 3 we are using input from previous timestamps so this x1 goes here it's passed here similarly x2 also so it's using the information from previous timestamp but not the future timestamps so for example uh, let's say we have some words like uh, uh, he said fox is a cunning animal so here once we have processed first three words we cannot be sure whether fox is the name of a person or not in this case it's not but exact same sentence can, can be he said fox showed me how to override nuclear reactor so in this case the first three words are exactly same but if you see the future words you see that in the second case fox is the name of a person lucius fox and in the first case fox is, a, is an animal so we don't need just information from the previous words but also from the uh, words further in the sentence so for that purpose we will uh, later see bidirectional rnn or brnn but for now for understanding the concepts a simple uh, recurrent neural network model would suffice uh, now let's uh, see the forward propagation steps so we will uh, formalize it so here a1 can be calculated as some activation applied to w a a 
a0 for calculating a1 this one we are using a0 and x1 so w a x x1 plus b a and uh, we will also calculate y hat 1 and we will use usually a different activation for purpose it can be same also g1 and g2 so w y a a1 plus b y so here we are using this notation where w a so the first uh, subscript denotes that it's used to calculate a like quantity and the second one denotes that uh, we are multiplying it taking it as input uh, some a like quantity and in this case if you see here w a first one denotes that we are using it to calculate a and the second one denotes that we will be multiplying it with x similarly here and in general you can think of it as a t equal to g1 of w a a a t minus 1 plus w a x x t plus b a similarly for this one so now uh, this looks a bit uh, messy and uh, this is a very simple neural network model and if we are working with a complex neural network model we must simplify this notation so what we will do uh, we will combine these two into one so w a a times a t and t minus one plus w a x times x t so let's rewrite it so what we will do we will combine these two and we will write it like this one uh, so a t is equal to g let's call it g1 and g2 w a so we will denote this as w a since it's used to calculate a and we will see what this w a denotes a t minus 1 comma x t so what we are doing a t minus 1 is a vector x t is a vector so we are uh, appending x t after a t so if this dimension was let's say 100 and this dimension was 1000 then this entire dimension will be 1100 similarly what this w a is and this ba will remain same so this w a is nothing but w a a and we augment w a x here so if uh, this was 100 this a t minus 1 was 100 cross 1 and this was uh, let's say 100 cross 100 so uh, this height was 100 and this width was 100 and this was 1000 then this will be 100 cross 1100 and you can see that 100 cross 1100 and this vector is 1100 so result will be same and you can verify it so this notation we will use instead of these three terms we are reducing it to two terms and this waa and wax we are reducing to wa and this is already one term but uh, for consistent consistency we will write it as g2 times w uh, this is used to calculate y so w y a t plus b y so uh, these are uh, uh, the basics of a recurrent neural network model and we saw the forward propagation step uh, in future videos we will see the backward pr propagation steps uh, for this recurrent neural network model